this evening. Come on and lift up your hands. Come on and lift up your hands all over this place this evening. Father, we come to you this evening. We love you. We thank you. We praise you for this opportunity, God, that you've given us to come into this house tonight, God. Lord, to gather in one mind, one accord, in one place. And we're believing tonight, God, that you're going to absolutely manifest yourself, God. Lord, you're going to touch somebody tonight, God. Somebody's going to be saved. Somebody's going to be healed. Somebody's going to be delivered. God, and we believe that tonight, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we pray over this offering tonight, God. We pray, God, we bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Tears. 
just keep playing that right there. Hallelujah. Come on and just lift your hands up this evening. And I want you just to think right now, think back at all the times that you felt that you was alone and that you didn't have anybody in the most hurtful situation you could ever go through. I sat here a while ago while they were singing that song and I thought seven months ago when my mom graduated to heaven, many more mornings I would get up before anybody and I would sit in that living room and I would just cry. I didn't know how in the world I was ever going to adjust this thing. But it was in the wee hours of the morning that God, there was a peace that passes all understanding that began to come into that place. And I began to think about that while she was singing that song a while ago. Through it all. Through it all. the trust in Jesus. Because there wasn't anything else going to get you through your situation. tell you tonight that while we're singing this song I pray that the peace that only God can give you would just absolutely captivate you right now no matter what you're feeling no matter what you're going through come on no matter what you feel I want you just to begin to sing this again and I want you just to begin to let it come up out of the deepest place of your heart.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's nothing better than him right now, come on. Come on and lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, if he's turned your grave into a garden, come on and worship him right now. Hallelujah. He can turn a mess into a message. Oh, God, come on. Come on, just take about 30 seconds right now. Feel something moving in this place tonight. Oh, I feel something stirring in this place tonight. You're not here by accident, I'm telling you right now. You're here by divine appointment. You're here by divine appointment because God wants to take whatever you're going through and God wants to turn that thing around right now. God wants to turn that thing around right now. God wants to put a song in your spirit that says he can turn graves into gardens. He can make he can make an army out of dry bones. Oh, come on. Come on. Sing that verse again. Sing that chorus, whatever. Come on. really truly taking you from a place come on as messed up as you were as messed up as you were and he pulled you out oh God my my God isn't that good do you realize the testimony that is upon your life because he pulled you out of something Hallelujah. Because he wretched down one day, he loved you so much. My God. That even in the deepest, darkest mess you could ever have been in, somewhere, somehow, some way, he pulled us out, Robin. He just, he wretched in. I think about it every time. I was going through my phone the other day. Uh, in, in, in that picture, I carry a picture of that apartment number three in my wa in my phone all the time. And I, I was going through my phone. I was looking for something the other day, and I seen that picture. And every time I see that picture, I just had to stop, and I had to say, "My God, my God, my God!" The day that He came into that apartment, the Holy Ghost walked right through the walls of that place, and forever changed my life. Hallelujah. How many know this evening it is? If he ever gets a hold of you. Somebody says, well, I've never, I can't, I can't change. He's never really got a hold of you then, and you never really got a hold of him. Because I'm going to tell you, you're not going to be messed up when he gets a hold of you. And when you get a hold of him. See, because let me tell you, so many people say, well, I've, I've tried this, it didn't work. Well, then you ain't tried it right. You got to try it the right way. You got to get a hold of him and let him get a hold of you and just let go and let God. Amen. He will do it. I'm telling you. How many is glad to be in church on Sunday evening? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in church on Sunday evening. I um, want to tell you that April, not April, October the 30th, um, 
we're going to do our fall festival out here uh, on the parking lot of the church. Um, and we need candy. We need donations. We're going to have um, uh, some things set up out here in the front. And if you want to bring candy and things like that, uh, uh, packages of candy, different things, you can put it in that tote or, or barrel, whatever we have out there. And then, uh, so we're going to have to get, we're, I don't even know what the date is. We're getting close to first this Friday, right? First is Friday, so we're getting close. We've got about 30 days, and uh, and we've got a busy October, I'm telling you. I was going to make an announcement this morning. I'll make it sometime. Uh, I've got some things that we're working toward and that for October that God is going to, God is going to bless it. I'm telling you, it's going to be a good time. And so anyway, um, we've got a lot of things that we're doing and uh, planning, and so how many don't want to miss that? Amen. I want to be a part of that. And all, also, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, everybody say Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, Ella is going to be preaching. Amen. We can't wait. We've been doing our little discipleship training uh, on Sunday afternoons, and, and uh, we've been pulling some things out. We've been figuring some things out. We, if you've got a, if you've got something, a call of God on your life, you can't sit down. You got to get up, and we are pulling it out of them. We enjoy it, and so anyway, we're just teaching them some things and basic things. And so anyway, I wonder how many brought their Bibles to church tonight. Amen. You brought your Bibles to church, not your phone, your Bibles. You brought your Bibles to church. Amen. You need a, you need a Bible. And phones may shut down on you, but this Bible will never shut. It'll never down. It'll it'll never. Battery won't ever go dead on this one. Amen. So anyway, look at Ezekiel 37 with me, would you? I'm gonna read one verse, and then we're going to Zechariah, and I'm gonna read a verse out of Zechariah also. So look at Ezekiel 37, verse number one. When you get it, stand with us, say Amen or something. Let me know you're there. Ezekiel 37, verse number one. The Bible says this, And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Hallelujah. Woo. My, that's rich. Amen. Look at Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Everybody got it? Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says this. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight. We love you. We thank you. We praise you for this opportunity and the spirit of God that is already in this place. And We love you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated. How many know this evening that the kingdom of God is a kingdom of power? I want to teach you something tonight. I want you to understand this. And the Holy Ghost is the power of God. So you've got to understand this. The church may be principled, but do we have power? Are you with me? See, because you look at this and you understand that these two verses that I read you tonight are dealing with the Spirit. The Bible says that the hand of the Lord was upon me. This means that he taught, he led, he guided, he protected, he empowered, he enlightened. He carried out in the spirit. If we're going to see, and here's what I want you to understand, that I believe that if we're ever going to see the glory of God revealed, we're going to have to get out of the flesh and into the spirit. Come on, somebody. 
You're gonna have, we're going to have to get out of the flesh and into the spirit realm because this is why that we don't see, sadly, in this hour and this day that we live, sadly, this is why we don't see more of the glory and the power of God. This is why we fail to experience more of the demonstration and the manifestation of the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. It's because, listen to me, God does his work by the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? He does his work by the power of the Holy Ghost. And the only way to participate with him and to get is and to, to get into this place is you've got to get into the spirit. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Are you with me? The spirit is not just a feeling or even God moving on the inside of us. Come on. God, it's, the spirit is not just the, the doodads that goes up and down your back. That's not just the spirit. Come on. The spirit is speaking of the realm, the dimension, the environment of God. Okay, let me do this. Revelations 1.10, it says this. John said... I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. When John was in the spirit, he began to see the glory of God. He saw the Lord, the Bible says, with feet like brass, as though they had been burned in the furnace. He saw his eyes as though they were flames of fire. Let me say this. He saw the throne. He saw and heard the angels. And he saw the four and the 24 and the 20 elders. And he saw the altar of God. And to see what John saw, we have to be where John was. You'll never see the manifestation, watch this, we'll never see the things that God wants and desires for his church of this day to see unless we are in the spirit. You've got to hear me tonight. We have to be where he was. We have to be in the spirit realm. That's why it's important, church, that when we come in this house, that we lay everything aside, that it's not about us, it's about him, that we switch, switch, we switch into a place of that we walk in the spirit, we get in the spirit, we begin to pray, we begin to intercede, and we begin to move into something. Ezekiel was in the spirit, Ezekiel 2, 1 through 7, and he said to me, son of man, stand up. And I will speak to you. As he spoke to me, the Spirit entered me, stood me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the people of Israel. They are the people from a nation that has rebelled against me. They, are their, their, they and their ancestors have rebelled against me to this day. Watch this. And he says, I am sending you to these defiant, these stubborn children. And he said, tell them, this is what the Almighty says. You are, are you with me? Whether these rebellious people listen or not, they will realize that a prophet has been among them. He said, son of man, don't be afraid of them or the things that they even say to you. Don't be afraid even though the, the, uh, even though the thorns and the thistles are around you and you live among scorpions. Don't let the things they say frighten you. How would you like to be in his position right here? How encouraging is that? God's saying, I'm gonna send you to this. But here's your assignment. But then he begins to say, don't be afraid of them because they're going to do this. They may do this. They may say this. And they may think this. And, and, and by the way, they're defiant and they're stubborn. I would say that sounds like a church that I've pastored, but I've only pastored one people. 
so I can't say that. Must be somebody else's church. But he said they're defiant and they're stubborn. So think about this. He said, don't let these things frighten you. Don't be terrified in their presence, even though they are rebellious people. Speak my words, he said, to them, whether they listen or not, because they are rebellious. Did you catch all that? He never said they're good people. Go preach to them. They're a little hard-headed. Uh-uh. He said, here's your son. And everything went from there. Can you imagine Ezekiel standing there saying, what have I done? What have I done to deserve this? Because listen to me. He, here's what I want you to understand. Then you look at Ezekiel 3, 4, 9, and he said to me, Son of man, go to the people of Israel. Speak my words to them. I am not sending you to the people whose language is hard to understand or difficult to speak. I am sending you to Israel. I am sending you to the nations whose language is hard to understand, difficult to speak, or whose words you cannot understand. And if I send you to those nations, they will certainly listen to you. But the people of Israel will refuse to listen to you because they refuse to listen to me. But you're sending me? Think about this. This is God speaking to to Ezekiel. And he said, I'm going to send you because they refuse to listen to me. But you remember that I said the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Watch this. All the people of Israel are very stubborn and they're hard-headed. Yet I will make you as stubborn and as hard-headed as they are. There's that. There's the key. He said, I will make you as hard as a diamond, harder than stone. Don't be afraid or terrified in their presence, even though they are rebellious. You look at Galatians 5 and 16, and this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5, 25, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Don't misunderstand me uh, because here's what I want to clarify something real quick tonight. I want to clarify this right now real quick. Let me just say this. I'm not insinuating that we all walk around seeing angels everywhere. Hearing voices, trumpets, things like that. And that if you're not experiencing anything like that, you're not spiritual. Come on. Are you with me? Because there are some people that live on a level that everything they look at, they see. Come on. How many of those pictures you looked at the clouds trying to figure out what in the world they're doing? You're just trying to see what they're seeing. They're, 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 they're seeing all these things and you think, what in the world? I don't see anything but a thundercat. Maybe I'm not that spiritual. But here's the thing, people are saying, and and, and here's what I'm trying to insinuate to you, is you don't have to walk around seeing angels everywhere and listening for trumpets. Hearing angels sing. I'm not saying that at all because what I am saying is that to experience the operation of the Spirit, we must be full of the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. In other words, the realm of the glory, what's this, of God's presence must become more important to us than this flesh. Church, we can sit here all night and we can talk about the glory and the manifestation of God. But if we, as long as we stay in the flesh realm, you'll never see that. You'll never experience that. 
See, what you experienced almost a year ago, the night the lights went out, that was a glory realm of the Spirit of God. That was a tangible feeling that you have felt. See, listen to me. Is that a one-time and a once-in-a-lifetime thing? No, it should never be. That should never be a once-in-a-lifetime thing. We should not grow up and grow old and one day look at our grandchildren if the Lord tarries and say, I remember a time many years ago. I don't want to say that. I want my grandkids kids to say, uh, uh, Papa, uh, I know what it's like uh, because every time uh, we walk in that house, uh, there is a manifestation uh, of the glory of God uh, because uh, there is a church uh, and there is a people that refuse to live in the realm of the flesh. We're going somewhere, so hang on. Because listen to me, healing Deliverance, miracles, signs, wonders all emanate from the glory realm. What's this? Or let me just say this by saying the kingdom realm. Listen, all supernatural activity of God belongs to the kingdom of God. Jesus said it this way, that the power to destroy the works of the devil and to cast out devils are a direct result of the kingdom of God, what's this, being present. Things like that don't just happen. You'll never face off with a demon and cast it out in your flesh. I don't care how much counselor you got in you. You can't counsel demons. It's what the world's trying to do now. That's what most church folk are trying to do now. They're trying to counsel this thing because they want to stay in the flesh realm because it takes way too much effort to get into the spirit realm because let me tell you something. They've got principle, but they don't have power. It's going to get better in a minute. Because let me tell you, all supernatural activity of the Spirit of God belongs to the kingdom of God. Jesus said that the power to destroy the works of the devil and to cast out devils are a direct result of the kingdom of God being present. Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Okay? I need you to pay attention with me. Because the kingdom is the principle. Watch this. The Spirit of God is the power. We may have the principle and we may talk about the kingdom, sing about the kingdom, preach about the kingdom, teach about the kingdom, but the principle is not enough. Let me say it this way. Principle won't heal the sick. Are you with me? Principle won't deliver the bound and the oppressed and principle won't set the captives free. Principle is important. Don't, don't think it's not important, but principle is the foundation on which we stand. Principle stabilizes and holds us firm. Principle is true, but just the knowledge of truth, it's not enough. I told you last Sunday night that we're going to another dimension. So we're going to another dimension. And this is where we're starting at, right here. Because let me tell you something. We can sit here and we can talk about everything God, God has prophesied. God said this and God said that. But when are we going to quit talking about it? When are we going to walk in it? When are we going to open the door and walk through the door? When are we going to quit talking about Azusa Street and start talking about what's happening on our street? When are we going to get to a place where we say principle ain't enough, but I need the power of God? See, because let me just say this. 
Church, because let me tell you what happens in revival is when revival begins to happen and people begin to get almost a year into it, uh, they begin to go back to the place. Listen to me. Three weeks a month after October the 25th of 2020, this place was on fire. Here we are now, 11 months down the road, uh, and now what is Do we need him to come in, turn the lights out again so we can all have a 45 minute? Was that not enough? See, because let me tell you, God is going to take you into a place that only if you're willing to go. See, God has came to a place over a year ago, October the 25th of 2020, in the middle of all hell breaking loose, pandemic, churches closed, people wondering what was going to happen, and God drops down in Kyoto, Oklahoma, shuts the power off for 45 minutes and lets everybody know I'm still God. So, I know he can do it again, but he don't. He should have to do it again. See, because let me tell you something. We can sit here and we can talk about all the prophecies and everything that has went out uh, until we know it by heart and memorized it, and even our grandbabies know it, uh, and even their gr- unborn grandbabies are already saying uh, what's happening. Uh, because let me tell you, we can talk about it as long as we want to talk about it, or we can. Step over into it. We can say, okay, God, what you did was to open the door and we're going to walk through this thing. We're going to be what you want us to be because let me tell you, principle is the truth, but just knowledge of the truth, it's not enough. Let me say it like this. You can know all the truth about healing, yet die sick. You can know all the truth about salvation and still go to hell. Are you with me? Is it making sense? See, because you must receive the kingdom of God. Listen to me. Is both principle and power. That's why 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, For the kingdom of God is not in word but in Say it again. It's okay. You can get louder than that. Say it again. Power. That's it. It's not just in word, but in power. It's in power. You've got to get that. You've got to get it in your spirit because 1 Thessalonians 1.5 says, For our gospel came unto you in word only, not in principle or truth only, but also in the power and in the Holy Ghost. You look at Jude, you look at, 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 at three, look at, look at verse three, and he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of a common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. Can I to remind you this? Jude Jude knew by the Spirit that the time would come when the body of Christ would slip off into a state of complacency. I'm just trying to stir you up tonight. I'm just trying to let something resonate, re-resonate up in your spirit because he knew that this moment of complacency was going to come. Yeah, we're living in a state of complacency in the church realm today. Everybody know what complacency is? It's that rut you get in. In, in, in other words, it's a grave with both ends kicked out of it. 
you get in a rut. You get in a place, and that's where you stay because you can't get up out of that thing. But listen to me. In this, you get what has happened is the church gets into this state of complacency, and they begin to settle. Watch this into a powerless faith, a faith without substance. A faith that is consisted, listen, only of words, ideas, and philosophies. You know what they call that? Head faith. You know what else it's called? Dead faith. It's a faith that nods its head that the Bible is true, but never presses into experience it personally. My God. Let me me break that down for you. It's the faith that says, yes, yes, he is a healer. That's what the Bible says. Yes, he said you could cast out devils. Yes, but I've never personally, I've never stepped into that because I don't have the power. I've got the knowledge, but I don't have the power. I I know that's a principle of the word of God, but I've never stepped into the power of laying hands on the sick and the This is what we got to get to, church. We got to get to this place. Because listen, James 2.20, the Bible says, faith, everybody shout faith. Without works is dead. Everything the Bible says is ours is ours. Watch this. Ours by right of inheritance. But even though you hold the title deed to the property, you'll never benefit from it until the day you take possession of it. Are you with me? I can have the paper in my hand all day and stand outside and look at that place and never walk on the property. And the paper ain't never going to do anything for me. But it's the day that I realize what I have holding in my hand. What I'm holding in my hand. Listen to me. It's the day that I realize what I have in my hand says one thing and it gives me the power and the authority to step into something else and do something else because I have the knowledge and I have the principle, but now all I need is the power. That's why church, listen to me, that's why there is so many churches right now that all they can talk about is miracles. All they can talk about is healings. All they can talk about is manifestations. They're not seeing them, but they can talk about them. They talk about what God used to do like it's a ghost. Come on. We can sit here and talk about all the miracles. The miracles, the things that happened. With AA out. Amy Simple McPherson. Catherine Coleman. All the greats. There's a book, go look. About that thick, I believe, Deborah. God's generals. You know what it was? All these preachers, these evangelists, these men and women of God they had seen all these happenings. But the thing about this is, is we live in an era where we would rather talk about what used to happen than to bury our face in the floor and say, God, do it again. 
Ain't nobody won't pay because the price tag on that on that kind of stuff, it's not cheap. There's a price tag on it. But we're not willing to, to lay aside the time that it takes to, to, to do what we've got to do, see, because we want our family saved, but we're not willing to take the time to lay aside because it takes some effort. Church, I'm going to tell you something. We're living in an era right now and living in a moment right now, and I truly believe right now, listen to me, that God is sitting there right now. He is standing there right now just waiting on somebody to open up their mouth, to put themselves on their face and say, God, I want you to do it again. Oh, God, I'm willing to pay the price. And then God begins to dump it out, and God begins to pour out miracles. God begins to pour out signs. You'll find yourself laying hands on people and them absolutely recovering. You'll find yourself people just getting saved because the Spirit of God that is resonating on the inside of you calls conviction. See, because we all want that, right? But we don't necessarily. We want to. We want to drive a BMW on a Volkswagen price tag. Come on. We want the manifestation. We want to see God move, or at least I hope you do. You want to see your, you want to see miracles. You want to see people walk in and get up out of wheelchairs. And I'm talking people that the doctors have said they've been like that for 40 years. They've never walked in 40 years. But you lay hands on them, and one night while we're having church like this, oh, don't look at me crazy. I'm telling you the truth. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen them walk people in uh, in wheelchairs. Their limbs were crooked and trawled up from head to toe. And before I left that place, I seen them walking, pushing their own wheelchair. Yeah, I can tell you that God is still a God that can do that. But oh my God, I can tell you that in a church like this, it's going to take somebody that's going to get on their face and say, God, I am contending for the faith. I ain't going to live. When's the last time you prayed this prayer and said, I don't want to live if I can't live with all the glory. When's the last time you prayed a prayer and said, God, if you don't save my family, block my name out too? You think that's crazy? Tell Moses. That's what Moses said. Y'all, that's boldness. If you don't save them, Block my name out too. Oh, but we want our family saved. We want to see people. We want to see people get up out of wheelchairs. But 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 Stretch or something, let me know you're still alive. Yeah, amen. See, because let me tell you something. Here's what you got to understand is this right here. God willed, has willed his power to the church. It's our inheritance, the power of the Holy Ghost, signs, wonders, miracles, healings, deliverances, visions, dreams, supernatural visitations, manifestations, demonstrations, and activities of the power of God is in us and through us. But let me say this, the majority of the church is satisfied 
with just the principle. It's a world we live in. Just satisfied to know that it's true. That's what the Bible says. It's true. Most people are satisfied at that point right there. Church, I'm going to tell you, you've walked into another place. You ain't in any other church right now. You ain't in any other Assembly of God church. You are in a place right now where I will not rest until I see these things. I will not rest. Listen to me. I will not rest until you are not content to live without it. That you will not say, God, I want it too. And I'm not content to live with just the principle. But God, I want to walk in the power. I want to live in it. Because most of the church world today is satisfied with just principle think I'm talking to anybody like that in this place today. They're just happy to know that it's in there and that it belongs to us but not owning it. Ah, God. Jude warned us to not accept, what's this, that powerless message to not be deceived and to contend for the original faith. Everybody shout original faith. Original faith. What is the original? Original faith of the early church, the book of Acts faith, okay? Because let me say this. The early church had which was vital living faith that produced real power. The miraculous signs and wonders, healing, deliverance, listen to me, there was an error. Don't get me wrong. There was an error in time, and I'm thankful But there was a time of the word of faith movement. Listen to me. But the truth is, if we can't manifest it and demonstrate it, then we don't really have it. Come on. Jesus said when he cast out devils, it was principle and it was power. What's this? It was word and it was power. Paul said, the kingdom is not in word only. Okay? Wherever the kingdom of God is, truly present, truly present, there is a manifestation of the power that produces Romans 14, 17. The Bible says the kingdom of God isn't meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. God believes that his kingdom, watch this, is in you. It is greater than all the sickness and all the disease, all the bondage, and all the oppression that is around you. If God's power and his kingdom is only inside of you, then what's happening around you? When you walk by somebody, when you sit in the same place of a sinner person, why are they not squirming? Why are they not uncomfortable? Why 
when you walk in their presence, why are they not like... Come on. The kingdom of God is where? Or is it you have principle but you don't have power? You know what the Bible says, but you don't carry the power. Come on, I'm going to preach you to either happy or hate me. You either going to go with me are you going to go without me? Because I'm going to tell you something, church. We got to get to a place of where the rubber meets the pavement. We got to get to a place of where we really say, hey. Because let me say this we got to get to a place of where your spouse, your husband, your wife, where they're lost and they're on their way to hell, that when you crawl in bed at night, they have to go get on the couch. Because there's something on the inside of you that is coming across that bed that's making them horribly uncomfortable. Are you with me? You know what I'm talking about? Because let me tell you something. Church, we've got to get to this place and we've got to realize that, that, that he said this. God believes that his kingdom is in you and that it is greater than any sickness, any disease and bondage and oppression that is around you. Come on. See, because Jesus said in Luke 17, 21, Behold, the kingdom of God is in you. There's a scripture. And I didn't make that up. John 4 and 4 says this, You are of God and greater. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in a, around you. My God, that's good. So you go back and you look at verse 7 of Ezekiel 37 and 7, and the Bible says, so I prophesied, Ezekiel, I give you the, the whole outline of where God had come talk to him and said, listen, here's where you're going. laid it all out to him. He was honest with him. They stubborn, hard-headed, but I'm going to make you as hard-headed and as stubborn as they are. Oh, God don't call the equip, but he equips the called. So, watch this. So you look at verse 7 and he says, so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and a shaking and the bones came together bone to bone. And then he said in verse 8, he said, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above till there was still no breath in them. Watch this. Notice what this I prophesied. Principle. Word. Truth. Good things happened. The bones came together. Things got shook up. There was a noise. Sinews, flesh came up on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath. Are you with me? In other words, principle, truth, and knowledge did some good things 
it brought them together. It shook some stuff around and it messed some stuff up. Made them look good, but there was no bread. Can I say it like this? They were still dead. Pretty, but dead. Together, but dead. Smelling good, but dead. Looking good, but dead. Had a suit and a tie on, but dead. Had their favorite pew, but dead. Sing in the choir, but dead. Paid their tithes, but dead. Principal, but dead. Knowledgeable, but dead. Churchy. Churchy. I'm churchy. But dead. See, because the devil isn't afraid of pretty. You don't care how many scriptures you can quote. Listen to me. He doesn't care how programmed that we are up in this place. Come on, somebody. He doesn't care that we got it all, we got all dressed up and we even smell good. That don't bother him. He lets you have church all day, every day. Dressed up, looking good, smelling good, but dead. Principled, but dead. Come on, somebody. See, because let me tell you, none of it bothers him because dead is still dead. You can have the biggest church in town and be dead. Listen, I love, I want this place filled up. I would love to see it wall to wall, person to person, elbow to elbow. But if it's dead, that don't mean squat. I don't care. All you got is more dead bodies. See, I want a church that is alive, that is blooming, that is blossoming, the blossoming that is absolutely laying hands. They say, go down there. They laying hands on the sick and something's happening. Good. People are being delivered, saved, healed, filled. Ah, something is happening down there. They may not smell good, but they're alive. Smell good. See, because let me say this. He ain't afraid of all that. You can have the best best praise and worship team on the platform and still be dead. Listen to me. You can have the most eloquent preacher in the country and still be dead. You're going to have all the doctrines of the church memorized and still be dead. If all we have is principle, we're dead. Listen, I'm trying to help you. If I teach on the gifts of the Spirit, watch this. For six weeks, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, healing, miracles, tongues, Interpretation of tongues, faith, discernment. Listen, if I could teach on all that for six weeks and never have a manifestation, we're just dead. If I teach on divine healing and nobody gets healed, we are Are you with me yet? Because let me tell you something. Here's what you got to understand. When the kingdom of God is present, there is always a manifestation. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. When the kingdom of God is present, there is always going to be a manifestation. 
you don't have to go home and tell anybody the, 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 that God was in this place because the manifest presence is in this place. Everybody that walks in this house will know when God's in this house. You don't have to, I don't have to get up here and say we want to welcome the, 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 the anointing of God in this place tonight. They'll know he's here. See, because let me say this, Luke 5 and 17, and it came to pass on a certain day that as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and doctors of the law, what's this, setting by him, which were come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Power heals power of the Lord was present to heal them. That's the kingdom principle and power. Watch this. He was teaching the word principle and the power of the Lord was present to heal. The, the, there was a principle in the valley and had done some good, but there was still no life. We need the power and the presence of God. Ezekiel 37 and 9, he said this, Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Praise God. Listen. That's where we are. Come Holy Spirit, come in power, demonstration, and manifestation. Heal the sick, deliver the bound and the oppressed, and set the captives free. Break every yoke, destroy every bondage, every habit, every addiction. Cause the lame to walk, the blind to see, open deaf ears, work miracles, signs, and wonders. How do they get ready? Send the fire and baptize us with power. You look at verse 10, and he said, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceeding great, great army. I prophesy today that this is what's coming to Kyoto, Oklahoma, a mighty wind of God that will shake us all, and the many have been satisfied just to have principle are not going to be satisfied anymore. They're going to cry out for the power of God the breath and the wind of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing. Stand to your feet all over this building. Come on and lift up your hands all over this place. believe right now I believe right now come on lift your hands I believe there is a hunger right now that is coming back across the sanctuary for an apostolic anointing an apostolic power like the book of Acts had I believe that we're going to see a revival of the supernatural power of God in this church. Anybody would come into agreement with me right now on that. I'm praying that it will start right here, right now. In this place tonight, come, come. Would you just begin to feel around this front right now with hands lifted?
bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Or are we going to be just another church on the block? Wrapped up in complacency with all principle but no power. God, I want to see the manifestation of the power of God. I want to lay hands on the sick. see blind eyes open. I want to see the lame walk. Let me ask you church, how bad do you really want it? Are you tired of routine? Are you tired of just coming in on Sunday morning and starting at 11 sharp and ending at 12 dull? Or do you really want a manifestation of the power and a visitation of God? Begin to cry out right now. Begin to call out. We're going to have to leave the flesh and get into the spirit right now. I want to see it worse than anything in my life right now.
Come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. God, birth a hunger. That nothing can satisfy God but you and your power. church. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel something in this place right now. Pulling in my heart. Pulling in my spirit. Yeah. Oh God, nothing can satisfy us. Come on, if that's you right now, if you're hungry, to call out right now like you've never prayed, like you've never called out to God before. Come on. Begin to plead with Him right now. Begin to plead with Him right now.
Come on and sing. Come on and sing it. Let this be our prayer, our declaration right now. Come on and slip your hands up all over this building.
I would say to you this evening that I am a God of my promise. I am a God of word. That I will tell you this, that I am sweeping across this nation. I am sweeping through places that is open to me. I am sweeping through hungry people that is hungry for a move of my spirit. I will not overstep the boundaries. I will not overstep their limitations. But I will say to you today that if you take off the limits, I will absolutely do what I say that I will do. I will come into this place and I will absolutely pour out my spirit. I will come into this place and I will say, the lost. I will heal the sick and I will cause the lame to walk. I will cause the blind to see and the deaf to hear. I say to you this evening that I am not limited. I am a God that is God all by myself. I am a God that can do the miraculous. I am a God that is looking for a place. I am seeking out a place. Where will I rest? Where will my spirit land? I I say to you tonight uh, that make room for me uh, and I will make an abode in this place. Uh, I say to you tonight uh, that I will do uh, what I said I will do uh, in these last days. Uh, I will pour out my spirit uh, upon all flesh, uh, your sons, your daughters. Uh, I said to you tonight, uh, make a place for me, uh, make room for me uh, and I will show you uh, that I am a God with no limits. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord as long as you will. As long as you want. If you need to leave, you can be dismissed, but you can stay as long as you want and just soak all this up you can. Hallelujah. God, you are so 